We're still looking at Chapter 8, talking about long-term assets. And in this section, which starts on page 346, we're looking at additional expenditures. And this is basically dealing with when a company has a plant asset, but then has to make some additional expenditures to keep that asset working um, appropriately or needs to improve the asset in, for some reason. The question that an accountant has to deal with here is whether or not that additional expenditure should be expensed immediately, meaning charged to an expense account, or if it needs to be capitalized, which means adding it to the value of the asset. So we talked before about how assets, plan assets, are recorded at cost, and then you depreciate that amount over a period of time. But when you have an additional expenditure that actually increases the useful life of the asset, then you capitalize that additional cost, adding it to the original cost of the asset. So we distinguish these two things by calling one revenue expenditures or the other is capital expenditures. So a revenue expenditure is an additional cost for a plant asset that does not increase the asset's life or productivity. So it's recorded as an expense and we deduct it from the current revenues for this particular period. Examples would be things like cleaning, repainting, adjustments, and lubricants. But a capital expenditure does add to the useful life or the productivity of that particular asset. So in that case, we debit those costs to an asset account and they get reported on the balance sheet. An example of this would be if you replace a whole roof or you expand a plant that's already in existence or major overhauls of machinery and equipment. So it's important to distinguish this uh, correctly because your financial statements are going to be affected uh, based on whether or not you record it as a revenue expenditure or a capital expenditure. Now, to continue with this, any type of ordinary repair is an expenditure that is just to keep the asset in normal, good operating condition. And these things are necessary to keep the asset performing as it's supposed to perform. Ordinary repairs are not generally those things that extend an asset's useful life beyond what it was originally expected to serve us. So we don't capitalize these things, we expense these things. So in this case down here, if this company has repair cost of $9,500, the way that they would record this is they would charge it to the expense account, a debit to the expense account, and a credit to cash. But if what you're doing is going to better the, useful, the, the usefulness of the asset, or if it's some type of extraordinary repair that's going to cause us to be able to use that asset longer, these things are going to be capitalized. So this explains a betterment, an improvement. It makes the asset more efficient or productive. It might involve adding a component to the asset or replacing one of its old components so it increases the um, asset's useful life. Um, anyway, this goes on and explains how that might work. And then in this case, your journal entry is not to an expense account, it's to the actual asset account. So you're increasing the value of the asset, the cost of the asset, and then if you paid cash, then your credit would go to cash. Extraordinary repairs extend the asset's useful life beyond its original estimate. They are capital expenditures, meaning we're going to charge it to the asset, we're going to debit the asset account because they're going to benefit future periods. And this is what Delta Airlines actually has in their, um, that they disclose in their financial reports. Modifications that extend the useful lives of airframes or engines are capitalized and amortized, which means depreciated, over the remaining estimated useful life of the asset. So this is an additional uh, concern that you might have 
when you're working with plant assets. The next section talks about how we record the disposal of plant assets. Okay, um, it, it just is common sense that there's going to be times that you're going to have to dispose of plant assets. Um, sometimes they just wear out and other times they become obsolete. Sometimes you actually sell them because things change in your business and you no longer need that particular asset. But basically you, when you get rid of the asset, you're either going to just throw it away, discard it, you're going to sell it, or you're going to exchange it. And there are four basic steps involved uh, in accounting for a disposal of a plant asset. And it's explained here in this box that you find on page 348 in your textbook. The first thing we have to do is make sure the depreciation, the depreciation is up to date, that you've recorded all depreciation up to the day that you're going to dispose of the asset. Then we have to remove the disposed assets account balances. So we have to remove the actual asset from the books. If we did get any cash or some other asset in exchange for the asset that we're disposing of, we have to record that. And then if there's a gain or loss based on the book value of the asset that you are getting rid of, then we have to record that as well. So let's talk about the most simple way of doing this. If you have a plant asset that you're getting rid of and it has no market value, let's take this example of a machine that cost us originally $9,000. Its accumulated depreciation is also $9,000. So because we've already fully depreciated it, it has a zero book value. So the entry to record getting rid of that is pretty simple. We just reverse the accumulated depreciation and machinery. So instead of crediting accumulated depreciation, we debit it, and that's going to clear out the depreciation on that machine. And the machinery was originally recorded as a debit to machinery, $9,000. So now we're going to credit machinery for $9,000 to take it off the books. And you can read this here, how it basically follows all four of the steps up above. But what happens if we're trying to get rid of an asset that is not fully depreciated or one whose depreciation is not up to date? So let's use this example have some equipment that cost $8,000 originally, but its depreciation is so far has only been recorded at $6,000. So it's going to have a book value still of $2,000. It's been depreciated over time using the straight line method over eight years with no salvage value. But we've disposed on it in the middle, we've disposed of it in the middle of the year on July 1st. So the first thing we have to do is get the depreciation up to date for this particular year. Well, they've been depreciating it at $1,000 a year, and we're six months into the year. So the first thing is we have to depreciate for the first six months of the year that we were still using it. That would be $500 because it's 1,000 times half a year. So we debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation like we normally would do to record depreciation. But now we're getting rid of the piece of equipment. So what we would have to do is now accumulated depreciation is going to have a balance of 6500 a credit balance of 6500 So to get rid of that, we're going to debit accumulated depreciation for 6500 The equipment has a book value of 8000 We have to get rid of that by crediting equipment for 8000 The difference between these two figures is $1,500, which represents our loss on this piece of equipment because we were not able to use it until it was fully depreciated. So we have the debit to accumulated depreciation for $6,500, a debit to loss on disposal of equipment for $1,500, and then equipment itself is credited for $8,000. Now this loss this $1,500 loss is going to be reported on the income statement under the section at the bottom called Other Expenses and Losses. Now, as this says here, sometimes this happens and you actually end up having to pay somebody for the difference because you may still owe money on that. And that would come into play 
um, at that point in time. Now, another way to dispose of plant assets is by selling them. And we're going to look at an example here of a sale of equipment that originally cost them $16,000. It has accumulated depreciation of $12,000, so it still has a book value of $4,000. The annual depreciation on the equipment has been $4,000 using a, a straight line method. So the first thing we have to do is to record the depreciation for the first quarter of the year because they're selling this on March 31st. And we already said it's $4,000 a year. This is one quarter of the year, so we have $1,000 that we have to record. So this is a debit to depreciation expense and a credit to accumulated depreciation like you normally would do anytime you're recording depreciation. But here's an example. They're selling this for $3,000 cash. Now remember I just said it has a book value of $4,000 or it did have a book value of $4,000 but now we have another uh, $1,000 of depreciation so that brings the book value down to $3,000. So they're receiving $3,000 cash which is equal to the equipment's book value as of March 31st. $16,000 is what they originally paid. 12000 of what they had already depreciated before this year, $1,000 for this quarter up here, so that's now $3,000. So there's no gain or loss because they're getting exactly what the book value is. So your entry here is you debit cash for $3,000, you debit accumulated depreciation for the 13, which is already in the accumulated depreciation account, so you're clearing that out and then you credit equipment for 16000 and that takes the equipment off the books. So in this situation there's no gain or loss. But what if we sold the equipment for more than the book value? If they receive $7,000 that means they've just made $4,000 on this equipment. So your entry would be similar except you got $7,000 cash. You still have to debit accumulated depreciation for 13. You still have to credit equipment for 16 because that's the original book value. So this adds up to 20. And over here we have to put a $4,000 credit that represents a gain on disposal of equipment. And this is going to end up on the income statement as well um, as a gain on equipment. If you sold the equipment for less than book value, our book value is 3000 what if we only got 2500 for it? Again, once you follow these other examples, this one's pretty easy as well. What cash did we get? What was the accumulated depreciation? How much is the book value of the equipment? The difference is going to be your loss on the disposal of equipment and that would be a debit to loss which also will go on your income statement. So this is how we handle the discarding or disposal of plant assets.